Hi, how is everyone doing today? Today is Thursday, February the 2nd. Um, we are in a new month. Um, as you know, we have been studying uh, Psalms, the book of David, um, and we've been going over a over his journey. And as we've gone through, we found out that, you know, David was, was scared because Saul and friends and all of them wanted to kill him. So he ran off and hid. And as he went to go hide, he thought he was alone, but he wasn't alone. God was with him. So he's been praying and asking God for his protection and asking God to help him with his enemies. So that's what we've been reading about in Psalms in our devotion book. Um, today we are going to be in Psalms 18, which is a really long Long chat, long chapters got a lot of verses in it. It's verses one through fifty. So we're gonna do parts one, two, and three today, and then I'm going to turn around and do uh, parts three, four, uh, four, five, and six on the next part um, because it's such a big one. It'll really probably take an hour to do it if I did it all one bunch together. So I'm gonna do it two separate ones. So you'll watch this one, and then I'll go and I'll do the other one with the other chapters in it so it doesn't seem as long because it's going to be very long um, this chapter and going over it because um, we have to read Psalms 18 and like I said Psalms 18 is very long it has all this this is one chapter verses one all the way through 50 and it goes all the way to the next page so there's a lot of pages in there this is the next page so it's over two pages full of Two, two and a half pages full of what we need to read in this so I'm going to start off on a word of prayer and we're going to do like I said we're going to do part one part two and part three today so we're going to go to all the way to verse 19 today and we'll stop at 19 and then I'll do the next part on the next video I'll either get it done today or I'll get it done tomorrow for y'all to see the next part of it so this is going to be part one of Psalms on 18, and I'm going to pray, and then we'll get started. Dear Lord, we come to you today and give you thanks and give you glory for waking us up again this morning. I give you thanks and for all my listeners and praying that they are growing and understanding it is great to read your word and grow in your knowledge. As I read this lesson today in Psalms 18, I pray that you give me the wisdom and the knowledge and you speak through me and guide me to help your people, to help them understand your word and help them what you want them to learn today. And again, I thank you for this lesson and bless, I bless, I pray over this lesson in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Um, I'm going to get the Bible at to read all the way to 19 and as we know we've done this a couple of times my phone wants to act silly and wants to go another route instead of doing what I wanted to do so hopefully pray this time it will work and we will get started Psalm 18 I will love thee O Lord my strength the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken, because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly, yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed. 
hailstones, and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomforted them. And the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them which hated me, but they were too strong for me, they prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place, he delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord. Okay, that's all the way, verses 1 through 19, like I said, this one's a very long this is a very long chapter in um, Psalms 18. It has a lot of verses in it. It has 1 through 50. So we're going to do 1 through 19 because they break them down in parts. And they have a part 1, part 2, and part 3. So I'm going to do part 1, part 2, and part 3 today. And then we'll do part 4, 5, and 6 on my next one. Um, as we read in... Psalms 1, and Psalms 1 is going to be uh, part 1, and it's Psalms, it's verses 1, 1 through 4, and I'm going to read it to you, I'm going to read it in the English version, so we, uh, we can understand it both ways. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. May shield and the horn of my salvation and stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of the death surround me and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. So in part one, when I wrote, took notes of what they were talking about, in part one, they have the title wrote is, God is God is a rock for David. David calls God many different names to show what God is like. And um, as we know that, you know, when David went to go hide, he went to go hide. There was rocks and there was hills where he was hidden. So he, in other words, he's talking about, you know, God is his rock and God, you know, God is his rock, and he's saying that's what made, that's what reminded him of God, is seeing those rocks, and if you think of a, God, a rock, a rock is hard, sometimes, I'm pretty sure the rocks he's talking about were really heavy, and they couldn't be moved, talking about the really big rocks, so he's talking about God is his rock, you know, so if we kind of put it into terms, if we think of a rock, probably the size of rock he's talking about, it's one of those big, heavy stone rocks, and you can't move it. You can't do anything with it. So he's felt God was his rock. And that's what we get to for verses 1 through 4. It says, God is a rock for David. Um, I'll go in here and give you some more um, things they said about it. I did take notes. In case I missed something and I didn't jot it down, I'll go ahead and read it in here. Um, it says... Um, it says, David calls many different names to show what God is like. David hid from his enemies in the woods and in the fields and the hills. He hid behind rocks and on top of, of hills. They were like fortress. They were like a high tower that soldiers made. David said that they were like the shields the soldiers would hide behind. They all made David, remind, David rem, remember God. So, I don't know if anybody is familiar like with the army or when soldiers have to hide and they have these big stones that are right there and they hide behind the stones and they point their weapons that's what david's kind of saying that it's like a rock it's like a stone it's like a kid go out there and be a fortress when you're a young kid and you go build these things because you and your friends are playing it's like one of those where he felt protected behind by it and then as we get into um part two of uh, talking about what David was talking about in part two, and those are verses uh, four, and those are verses four and five, four and five, so, um, which I did read, which I did read four already, but we'll read it again, the pains of the death surround me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid, 
The swords of shallow surround me. The snares of the death confront me. Okay, so in this one, in what they have this title for, is David asks for help. So in verses 4 and 5, in verse 1, God is the rock of David. In part 2 of it, in verses 4 and 5, David asks for help. So this was where David asked God for help with his enemies. And um, it said David had many enemies, and his enemies were included Saul, his friends, of Goliath and also one of his enemies was his son David's own son was his enemy a Solomon and uh Cush and Cush we know was one of his enemies too and he was from the from the Benjamin tribe he was one of the 12 tribes so um so and he all thought of the soul and soul we kind of went into it's spelled S H E O L soul it's an underground where a place for which the peep the go down it's like a place where you go down it's what they call it it's a place for death where people go down it's underneath it's under the world is what what it is saying in here and um and so David asked for help he asked for help with his enemy he's asked for them him to help him with his enemies in that one and as it says on here, because I, you know, I took notes, David had many enemies. They were Saul and the friends of Goliath and Cush. You can read about Cush in Psalm 7, which we did Psalm 7, and Cush is what I said. Cush is, you know, one of the people from Benjamin, from Benjamin, and it's the 12th tribe. There were many others, even David's own son, Absalom. They all wanted to kill David. They made David feel like a drowning man. He thought that he would soon be in Saul. So he asked God for help. So he thought that he would be underground. He thought that he would be at the bottom and underneath the ground because of them wanting to kill him. So he thought that's where he was going to go. So David asked for help. So we have part one, God is the rock of David. We have part two, David asked for help. And now we're on part three. Part 3 is verses 8 through 14, and it says, God answers David. And let's see, 8, and four, eight through 14 is, um, Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindly by it. He bowed thy heavens also, and came down, with darkness under his feet. And he rode up upon a cherub. And flew, and flew, he flew upon the wings of wind. He made darkness his secret place. Um, darkness his secret place. He can know it around him was dark waters and thick clouds of skies. From the brightness before him, he thick clouds passed with hazel stones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered lightning abundance and his vengeance of them. So, um, as we read in that one where it says God answers David. So, God answers David about his enemies. God, you know. David prays to God to do something for do something for his enemies, and these are these are the things that God did. He helped. He did by earthquakes, storms, and um, home. We all know that God's home is heaven. So it was the earthquakes he did. It was storms, and and it says in here that Jews believe heaven was above the sky. So they believe that's where God lived up in the heaven. So. There was earthquakes where we know earthquake is something that rumbles the ground and it cracks and breaks the ground in which we know what storms is lightning and thundering and rain and stuff like that. So that's what it's saying that's how he answered David. He answered David by thunderstorms, rain, lightning, and earthquakes is what he did. David thought the storms was that it was a sign that God was coming to earth. God made people afraid. So I'm sure plenty of times when we're at home and we hear thundering and we hear lightning and we hear, you know, rumbling and we hear, if we hear any, if there's an earthquake or anything like that, we get scared. We get nervous. It's like, ooh, what's going on? So we can just imagine how David felt and how all David's enemies felt when they felt that wrath coming of God showing, you know, the 
tornado, you know, earthquakes, you know, the thunderstorms, tornadoes. I mean, all those things do with the storm. So that's kind of how he felt. And it says, earthquake was so bad that people saw the under the mountains and under the seas. So that means everything was so, so bad. Let's just kind of picture that, you know, if you raise up of a, under a mountain, I'm pretty sure that we all can figure what you would see if you raised underneath a mountain. I'm pretty sure if, you know, if we raise up a sea, we could see everything, you know, it would be different. It would be something different. Um, kind of like an earthquake. I mean, I'm not, I've never been around an earthquake, but I'm sure it's probably magnificent just watching it, you know, and it's probably devastating at the same time. And um, then as we get here, and it goes down to verses 16 and 19, it says, God used storms and earthquakes to help David. God saved David. David from danger. God put David in a safe place. So what he did here is he put David in a safe place and he helped David out, you know, by giving, doing this for his enemies, by, you know, protecting him from his enemies. And that's pretty much what he did. He protected him from his enemies by doing what he did. Um, so we have Part one, God is the rock of David. We have part two, David asks for help. And then we have part three, God answers David. So those are the three parts that we went over today um, studying about Psalms 18 so far that we see that God, that you know, that God is a rock. God is going to be always be there for us. We see that David, we see that God is going to help us and that we see that God answered. So we have three things right there that show us that, you know, if we pray and we act, we pray, be patient and we wait, God is going to answer us. I mean, he answered David, you know, why would he not answer us? So, you know, those are some of the things that, um, that they're talking about in those first, first ones. Um, we still have a little bit of time left. Um, I can go ahead and give you, it says, rock of David, ask for help, answered, and then it says why God gives help to people. Um, I'll give you, that's what we're going to kind of go over next time because like I said, this is a long one. This is the most important part of Psalms for Christians. What happens when we become Christians? Psalms 18.24 tells us God makes us righteous. This means that we are clean when God looks at us and that we are his friends as well. See below after something to do. So it's just kind of telling us, you know, what should we do and how should, what should we get out of this to study when we are studying this. And it says in here some things to do. It says, how many names for God can you find in Psalms 18? We already know that rock means God. We already know that fortress, you know, those are, he's using those as a term for God. So, you know, go in there and see if you can find a couple more meetings of, you know, find a couple more words that, you know, stand for God is what they're asking. And then it says, go read Psalms 18 verses, uh, Verse 20 through 27, what does God turn away? Why does God turn away from some people? Let's find out why he turns away from some people. And all this I'm reading you, we will continue and go over it when I finish the other part of Psalms 18. And it says, remember the words of Jesus. Not everyone that calls me Lord will go to heaven. Only those that obey my father. So, you know, we... Pretty much we need to obey, which we did learn in chapter, you know, 16 and 16 that, you know, we need to obey. We need to obey. We need to listen to God and we need to trust him. So we did have learned that already. And um, while I have a still a little bit of time left, I'll go ahead and read something in here because we'll be going back over a little bit of more of this when I do the second part. Um, it says today's Psalms is describing God's power in several other altercation ways, the st strength of a storm, hail, lightning, currents of water, earthquakes, smoke, fire, coals of fire, and thick darkness of smoke. David is not frightened, frightening of us, frightening us, but encouraging us to encouraging us with the strength of God's deliverance for us. The Lord's reward, the Lord reward me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness of my hand. How thou he Recomes me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not wicked and departed from my God. So, if you, it, 
says a lot about in here about what's God's power, what he can do, you know, he can move mountains, he can earth, earthquakes, lightning, you know, all those things, so let's take that in consideration, you know, when we're not obeying him, we're not listening to him, and we're doing our own thing, let's kind of remember, God's got power, God's power is amazing, God has awesome power, so let's remember that, and, um, like I said, we'll go back over the other half because there's still more that we need to learn. And this one was a really big chapter. I think this one would have took us at least an hour to do. So I'm going to try to go back and do the other half. I should have the other half done tomorrow. We should do the other half tomorrow. Um, so I should have it done. It'll probably be later in the day to get it done tomorrow. But write those three things down. You have a pen and paper Write those three things down that I said that we learned today. Part one, we learned that God is God is our rock. Number two, we learned that God will answer us. Number three, uh, God answers. So, you know, and he did all this for David. This is what he did for David. So we know that he'll do it for us too. You know, God is my rock. I lean on him every day for strength and for wisdom and for prayer. I go to him every day. David answers. David he, David, you know, David asked for help. We all ask for help. That's what we should do. God is our rock. Let's go ask him for help and let's be patient. Let's wait for his answer because he will answer us. So that's what it's saying in here. And when we go into our next ones, um, I'm going to give you what they are because we did one, two, and three today. And I did go over a little bit of four with y'all because it said why God gives help to his people. That was another one. And uh, then it says, everything that David has come from God, everything, everything that David has, it's come from God, and God made David king. So those are some of the more of the other ones that we'll go through in the topics when we get to our next one, when I, when I get to sit with y'all on the next one, and it, oh, it should be tomorrow, it'll just be later in the day um, when I get it out. But it'll be the second part of this. And I encourage everyone, go ahead and go ahead and read Psalms 18. Go ahead and read it all the way through, you know, so you can study it and you can learn something from it. Just don't study with me. Go and study by yourself and learn the words yourself and go and understand what God is saying to you and what he wants you to learn too. Um, it feels weird because we didn't get to go through all of it. So um, I'm going to... Pray over this lesson today and pray that God brings us back tomorrow to learn the other half of it. And um, I hope everybody has a blessed day. Dear Lord, we come to you today and thank you for our word. It was a really long one today, so we pray that, you know, and give us the wisdom and the strength, you know, to keep reading about it and go back and finish what I didn't get to finish today. And pray that and give me the strength to come back with them tomorrow to finish the other half. Pray for all my listeners and pray that, and y'all understand that God is the power. God is the strength. God is our rock. You know, he's not going to let us down. Um, also, why I'm praying, I also want to pray for the world because right now there are so many things going on in the world right now. And I want everybody to know that God, God is in control and God is knows everything that's going to happen before it happens. So please believe and trust in him. And um, like I said, pray for our world, pray for our children, you know, just pray for, you know, everything and everything that's going on right now, God. And thank you for the lesson today and thank you for teaching us your word and pray to bring us back again tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.